In the midst of Sarah's daunting courtroom experience, a remarkable scene unfolded and the young girl, struggling to articulate her fears, noticed a deaf therapy dog named Carl by her side, this unexpected presence prompted the judge to pause the proceedings, Sarah, initially paralyzed by fear, found solace in the comforting presence of the white boxer, Carl, facing a menacing adversary in court was an overwhelming challenge for Sarah, whose anxiety was further exacerbated by her natural shyness, despite months of preparation, the moment she took her seat, she succumbed to a paralyzing silence, unable to utter a word or meet anyone's gaze, the courtroom, typically an intimidating space even for adults, became a terrifying ordeal for the young girl in this critical moment, Carl, the deaf therapy dog, became an unlikely hero, positioned discreetly in the courtroom. Carl belonged to the Companions for Courage and the K-9 Circuit Program, specializing in training dogs for court. Therapy, these therapy dogs, including Carl, played a crucial role in providing support to children who needed to testify, offering a source of comfort and security during challenging situations. Unlike other dogs in the program, Carl carried a unique distinction. He was deaf, rather than hindering his capabilities, his deafness became an advantage in the courtroom setting. Most service dogs require extensive training to ignore the various noises and distractions in a public venue, but Carl's inability to hear rendered these challenges irrelevant, his unwavering focus on the people he was meant to comfort set him apart as an exceptional courtroom therapy dog, however, being deaf presented its own set of challenges, traditional verbal commands were ineffective, necessitating a creative approach to training, under the dedicated guidance of his trainer, Joanne. Carl overcame this hurdle by learning American Sign Language, although unable to hear verbal cues, Carl mastered the art of responding to visual commands. Displaying a remarkable intelligence and eagerness to please, while Carl excelled in his training, some crucial aspects of becoming a service dog could only be evaluated through practical experience, the success of his practical training would determine whether Carl could fully embody the role of a reliable and supportive therapy dog in the courtroom, as Carl began his role as a therapy dog. He quickly endeared himself to the children he served during the most challenging moments of their lives. Recognizing the need for a calm and comforting presence, Carl became a source of solace for these youngsters, allowing them to express their love through hugs without fear of aggression, his large, reassuring presence created a sense of safety and protection, reassuring the children that the intimidating atmosphere of the courtroom wouldn't harm them with him by their side. Carl possessed a unique gift, further accentuated by a thoughtful plan devised by his trainer, Joanne, embracing them opportunity to wear jerseys and various outfits in colder months, Carl's wardrobe became a source of delight for the children, his playful attire, including legendary hats, injected a bit of humor into the somber courtroom setting, providing a moment of levity during an otherwise dire and scary situation. Despite his success, Carl faced challenges, particularly in mastering the art of sitting still during the extended periods of waiting in the courtroom, navigating the tedium of the courtrooms. Waiting game required patience and discipline, skills that Carl diligently acquired over time, eventually, he could be found on the bench, patiently waiting for his young friends, ready to fulfill his duty as their supportive companion. One of Carl's most significant challenges arose during a case involving a traumatized and incredibly shy little girl, Sarah, speaking in public was a nightmare for her, especially in a courtroom setting where she had to recount the worst moments of her life. Encouraged by her parents. Sarah decided to testify against the bad man who needed to be brought to justice, though terrified, she wouldn't face the daunting task alone. Having worked with Carl for some time, Sarah had learned to communicate with him through hand signals. Joanne, the astute trainer, devised simple signs that children like Sarah could use to summon Carl's support even before entering the courtroom. Carl, through these signals, developed a unique bond with each child, ensuring they knew they could trust him. When Sarah, Overwhelmed and struggling to speak, signaled to Carl during a court session, the judge, familiar with Carl's capabilities, promptly halted the proceedings, recognizing the need for a moment of magic, the judge allowed Carl to intervene, responding to the signal, the death therapy dog swiftly approached Sarah, ready to offer his unwavering support in the way only he knew how. As Carl took his place beside Sarah in the courtroom, he instinctively positioned himself between her and the 
Intimidating presence of the bad man, the large white boxer served as a protective shield, allowing the frightened girl to summon the courage to speak, with Carl by her side, Sarah focused on the judge and, with renewed confidence, resumed sharing her harrowing story. Throughout the entire testifying session, Carl remained a steadfast companion, providing comfort and support. Sarah's journey through the trials ahead was no easy task. Carl, however, became a constant presence, waiting for her. Each time she arrived at the courthouse, from the moment she stepped out of the car, he ensured she was never alone, even accompanying her into the courtroom when her courage wavered, his unwavering support gave her the strength to recount her story, ultimately leading to the justice she rightfully deserved. As the trials concluded, a crucial decision awaited, would Sarah's connection with Carl be severed, potentially causing additional trauma, recognizing the deep bond forged during months of support. Arrangements were made for continued visits between Carl and the girl, these post-trial encounters gradually spaced out, allowing Sarah to transition back to a normal life when she felt ready to let go. Sarah's experience was just one among the countless lives touched by Carl, the therapy dog. His impact extended beyond the courtroom, influencing the perception of the role of dogs in legal settings worldwide. His story resonated globally, shedding light on the remarkable program he represented. Carl, along with his canine companions, contributed to significant changes in courtroom dynamics, alleviating tension and providing vital support for both children and adults. Carl's unique story emphasized the strength found in embracing differences. His message reached people from all walks of life, encouraging the belief that anyone, regardless of their background, can make a difference. Carl's exceptional ability to connect with individuals left a lasting impression, and his story highlighted the transformative power of compassion in his downtime carl met numerous people many of whom confided in him seeking solace in his comforting presence joanne his dedicated trainer shared stories of people hugging carl overcome with emotion because his presence touched something profound within them carl's love for humans coupled with his open-hearted nature made him an extraordinary therapy dog providing sympathy and support to those in need beyond offering direct support to individuals involved in court cases, therapy dogs like Carl also provided assistance to the professionals within the court system, judges, who faced the challenging task of presiding over emotionally charged cases, found solace in the companionship of therapy dogs, these canine companions not only offer comfort to those involved in court proceedings but also extend their support to the hardworking professionals. Recognizing the stresses they endure, the therapy dog program, exemplified by Carl's impactful story serves as a model that has garnered interest from courtrooms in various countries, the idea of implementing therapy dogs to aid victims and witnesses is gaining traction globally, the story of Carl, the remarkable therapy dog, remains a testament to the positive influence these furry companions can have on the lives of those facing challenging circumstances. Take a break and follow me into the next story, one day. I fell ill and collapsed, seeing this, my son Ethan told my wife Madison, Mom, we need to take him to the hospital, hearing it, Madison uttered an unbelievable response, I have a trip planned, so no can do, she has been spending less time at home recently, starting about six months ago when I took over my father's job, despite the suddenness, I thought she might be enduring it, so I worked desperately hard at both my job and parenting, but eventually, I reached my limit and ended up being hospitalized. After being unreachable for several days on her trip, Madison called and asked Ethan, where's dad, then he said something shocking, my name is John Anderson, I turned 42 this year, I got married 8 years ago, and a year later, we had our child, living together as a family of three, I work as a doctor, initially, I was employed at a university hospital, but inspired by my father's dedication as a community-based private practitioner. I decided to follow in his footsteps. Half a year ago, when my father fell ill and had to be hospitalized, thinking of closing his practice, I resigned from the university hospital to take over, which made him happy. Following that, we moved to my childhood home next to the clinic, the building was old, so I mentioned to my father about wanting to renovate eventually, and he told me to do as I wished even after taking over. The community has continued to rely on me, which brings me daily satisfaction. I named our son Ethan, hoping he would grow up to be strong, he's in the first grade now but already expresses a desire to become a doctor and is learning German. 
He has exceeded my expectations and has grown into a responsible son, sometimes he's so mature it worries me, but seeing him play in the mud at the park reminds me he's still just a kid. My wife Madison is beautiful but capricious, lately, she's been less inclined to help with household chores or parenting, which has been a concern, in the beginning, we shared household duties, and she participated in parenting. But that has almost ceased in the past six months, occasionally, she'll take Ethan to the grocery store, but it's always me who takes him to parks or playgrounds, as if it's a given, I don't mind, but we've been lacking family outings recently, so today, I suggested we all go out together, hey, we haven't been out just the three of us for a while, how about we go out next Sunday, Madison, you haven't been out much with Ethan, have you, it can't be helped, I'm busy, Ethan wants to go to a movie. How about we go together this Sunday, after that, we can eat out, a movie, huh, Madison. Glanced at her phone and then said to me, well, alright, I don't have any plans anyway, that's great, Ethan will be so happy, thank you, I'm going to take a bath and go to bed, alright, good night, she took her phone and left the living room, oh man, I really want to talk more with her, I want to go out and do things together, we used to talk about the future and go out together, but today was good, usually she would decline. So I'm honestly surprised, hearing her agree made me happy, and I immediately told Ethan on that Sunday, Ethan, are you ready all set, I'm ready whenever, all right, just waiting on Madison, Ethan, where's mom, I don't know, I knocked on Madison's door but got no response, I tried again and slowly opened the door, Madison, are you there, opening the door, she was nowhere to be found, maybe she's in the bathroom, and at that moment, my phone rang, and it was Madison on the screen, Madison. What's up with the call, sorry, but I can't make it today after all, some work. Came up. Suddenly, you didn't mention it yesterday, did you, I said it came up all of a sudden, just go to the movie, the two of you, it's not a problem without me, right, she said in a rushed tone and hung up, oh, come on, I thought we could finally go out as a trio, dad, what's wrong, where's mom, mom got caught up with work so it's just the two of us okay, got it, Ethan showed a slightly sad face but then smiled at me, feeling sorry that he was looking forward to it, I decided we'd enjoy our day just the two of us, alright, Ethan, let's go, after the movie, how about we grab your favorite burger on the way back, yes, we grabbed our stuff and headed to the movie theater by car, a few hours later, when we got back in the evening, Madison was already home, I'm home, sorry, we're late, we went to the park and other places in the afternoon, it's fine, she replied indifferently as usual, Ethan approached her quietly, here, this is a present for you, he said, taking something out of his backpack, what's this, today there was a keychain making workshop, and I made one for everyone, this one's for you, saying that, he handed her a white star shaped keychain, before going to the park, we stopped by a craft workshop nearby, and Ethan wanted to do it, so he made keychains for all three of us, he chose green for himself, and I got blue, Madison accepted the present from him, it turned out well, didn't it, he said with a happy face, well, I don't think I'll wear it, but I'll take it anyway, I'm tired. I'll be in my room, saying that, she left the living room, Madison, I couldn't stand her tone and followed her, hey, wait, Ethan went to all that trouble to make it, that's no way to talk, I said in a voice Ethan couldn't hear, I didn't say I didn't want it, did I, Madison, can't you spend a bit more time at home, there are things I want to discuss, I've said it before, haven't I, I don't want to stay in this old, moldy place, why did you quit the university hospital, that's because I tried to explain, but she locked herself in her room, she seems to dislike that I decided to move here, I begged her to stay, I understood it was hard on her, but I wanted to talk it out, and this is what it's come to, even if she doesn't like it, she shouldn't say that about something our kid worked hard to make, I returned to the living room with a heavy heart where Ethan was, maybe I should have chosen something different from mom, he looked a bit down, Ethan, mom's just tired from work, maybe I'll attach it to my work bag, what about you, I think, I'll put it on my backpack, he smiled brightly, Madison's attitude must hurt him, it was like this before, ever since we moved here, she's become more indifferent, it can't go on for Ethan's sake, I need to talk this through properly next time, a few days later, when I got home from work late at night, Ethan was waiting, watching TV, sorry I'm late, Ethan, got caught up talking to a patient, I'll make dinner in a sec, hi, dad, it's okay, 
and I folded the laundry, wow, thanks, Ethan, he would take. The initiative to do the laundry or vacuum, he only cooks when I'm around since it's still a bit dangerous for him to cook alone, he's really growing up to be a responsible kid, oh yeah, I'll start getting dinner ready now, I'll help too, after putting down our stuff, we started preparing dinner together, Ethan, what do you want to do tomorrow, dad's off in the afternoon, so we can do whatever you like, yay, I'll think about it, got it, tomorrow is Ethan's birthday, Madison surely knows about it, I even reminded her yesterday to make sure she'd buy a present, so it should be fine, of course, I've prepared something too, but I'm worried if he'll like it, the next morning, Madison must have come back late last night, I can hear some noises from her room, now, I knock twice, then hearing a low response, I open the door to find her still in her pajamas, phone in hand, need something, I'll be at work until noon, so please take care of Ethan, did you get him a present, and don't forget, we're going out this afternoon. I know, don't keep repeating it, close the door when you're done, she replied irritably, her attention returned to her phone, so I quietly closed the door as told, with a mix of anxiety and hope, I leaned more towards hope, heading to the living room, Ethan was already there, happy 7th birthday, Ethan, here's a present for you, thank you, can I open it of course, Ethan excitedly opened the bag, wow, awesome. I gave him my old stethoscope, which I used to use, my father gave it to me when I was a child, just like him, now I remember being just as thrilled when I showed it to him before, he really liked it, so now I decided to pass it on to him, but I felt bad giving just that, so I included a basketball too, is it okay, okay, I'll take good care of them, okay, sure, seeing him like this, he still feels so much like a kid, let's do whatever you want today, I'll wrap up work quickly and come back so wait here with mom, have a good work, absolutely, I'll do my best, after getting him to eat. Breakfast, I let Madison know before heading to the clinic next door for work, after lunch break, when I finished work and came home, Ethan was sitting alone in the living room, where's mom, she left a while ago, she said to wait here because dad would be back soon, I immediately called Madison's phone, hello, she sounded as grumpy as usual, Madison, why aren't you here, I had something to do, I'll be back by tonight, tonight. Today is Ethan's birthday, you know that, we said we'd go out together. This afternoon, as I was scolding her over the phone, Ethan was shaking his head, signaling it was okay, alright, make sure you're back tonight, got it, okay, yeah, I know, she hung up despite being irritated, today is Ethan's birthday, I decided to focus only on him, Ethan, what do you want to do today, I want to play basketball and want to eat your steak, is that what you want? when I asked, he nodded enthusiastically. Then we spent the day doing things he loves, like playing basketball and visiting a bookstore. On our way back, we bought cake, just as the steaks were about to be ready, I checked my phone to contact Madison and saw a text message from her, I'd be back today, seeing it, I suddenly felt a wave of exhaustion, noticing my mood, Ethan asked, Dad, are you okay, yeah, the steaks are ready, let's eat them together, We've got cake too, let's eat, I celebrated his birthday by eating steak, talking about school, basketball, and his German classes, in the next late morning, I woke up almost before noon, probably due to exhaustion, oh no, I quickly changed and left my room, only to bump into Madison, Madison, what happened yesterday, Ethan was waiting for you the whole time, I came back within the day, you both were just sleeping, weren't you, anyway, I'm in a hurry, she hurried off to the bathroom, oh dear, I could only let out a sigh of resignation, as well as I felt somewhat sluggish. As I slowly made my way to the living room, I found Ethan, Ethan, sorry I'm late, you must be hungry. Right, you could have woken me up, it's okay, I ate some bread, sorry, I felt guilty, this had never happened before, as I was about to make some coffee, pouring water into the pot to boil it, that's when it happened, my vision blurred and I felt so dizzy I couldn't stand, then I dropped the mug I was holding, and it crashed loudly to the floor, Dad, are you okay, hearing Ethan's voice, I collapsed, Dad, are you okay, hey, Dad, Ethan, sorry, get Mom, got it, just as he was about to go get Madison. She walked into the living room, and he quickly ran up to her, Mom, we need to take him to the hospital, what, what's all this sudden, Dad collapsed, please help. I hoped she would respond to his desperate plea as my consciousness faded, however, her response was unexpected, I have a trip, so no can do, what about dad, 
he'll get better soon, besides, I'm going on a trip with my parents for about four days, so take care. She said to me, lying on the floor in a somewhat cheerful voice, Mom, Ethan. I'll bring you a gift. So, wait here nicely with Dad, with that, she left, I couldn't believe that was happening, leaving her incapacitated husband and seven-year-old son behind, more than that, I had to let someone know for Ethan's sake, for now, I managed to grab my smartphone from my pants and then lost consciousness. A few hours later, I woke up in a hospital bed, Ethan stood beside me, and a doctor and a few neighbors were there. Confused about what had happened, I looked around, and the doctor explained, you collapsed from anemia, and it seems like you were quite exhausted too, is that so, thanks for everything, as I lay there thanking them, the doctor shook his head with a kind expression and explained what had happened, your thanks should go to your son, he used your smartphone to call an ambulance and alert the neighbors, what, you did all that by yourself, yeah, remember you taught me the emergency number, right, thank you, Ethan. I stroked his head, and he looked at me with determined eyes, I always knew he was dependable, but I hadn't realized just how much he had grown, I felt sorry for the others, but learning about my son's growth made me happy, a few days later, my phone kept ringing, so I reluctantly answered, only to find Ethan on the other end, mom, what's up Ethan, it's you, where are you, where's dad, dad has gone far away, what, what does that mean, far away, I'm near the house, at a restaurant, bye, restaurant, wait, he hung up without listening to her, a few minutes later, Madison rushed into the restaurant and sat down in front of Ethan, Ethan, and you're here too, Ethan said you'd gone far away, in a gloomy voice, what, you thought something happened to me after I collapsed, well, I mean, I was just worried, she looked a bit sheepish, because dad went to the far restroom, Ethan explained with an upward glance, come on, you're confusing, but more importantly, our house, why is there no house, her panic wasn't just about me being gone but also about our house, Disappearing, actually, I had been considering remodeling the house. But after consulting with my hospitalized father, we decided to demolish it and build anew, I had wanted to discuss it with her, but she never listened, so I kept it to myself, what, so, it's going to be a new house, awesome, you could have just said that, it's such a surprise, Madison, you weren't around, were you, and when we moved here, I did mention that we'd build new eventually, didn't I, did you? So when will it be ready? She looked at me with a happy face, within six months, really, but. Where's my stuff, where did you keep it, and why, Ethan, oh, I can't discuss this in front of Ethan, what's that supposed to mean, she looked puzzled, your belongings, I stored them at a young man's place, what are you talking about, there's no such person, I've checked everything, so lies won't work, her behavior changed suddenly after we moved, and her sudden work commitments were unlike her, so, I had felt something was off. Though I thought she might be busy with work, asking a relative who worked at the same place revealed that wasn't the case, besides, I doubted she would go on a trip with her parents, she always said they were strict and hardly spoke to them, therefore, after collapsing, I contacted my in-laws once, as expected, they were home and didn't know her whereabouts, so, I hired a detective agency to investigate, just as I suspected, she had another man, here's the evidence, what, when did you? I presented the documents and photos gathered by the investigation in front of her. There was no escaping the truth now, realizing she couldn't deny it, she started to apologize, I'm sorry, I was out of my mind, I won't do it again, forgive me, okay, we are a married couple, right, what are you saying, you were with him even when I was collapsing and during Ethan's birthday, weren't you, let's get a divorce, divorce, wait, but you just set a house for three, that includes me, right, indeed. I was building a house for the three of us, but Madison wasn't part of that three. When I said three, I meant Ethan, my father, and me, what, you know I was stressed because the environment changed, that's it, you'll forgive me, right, she tried to cuddle up to me with a pleading voice, not caring about the people around us, sure, I changed our environment, but that doesn't justify betraying the family, I handed her the divorce papers, sign here now, I'll also demand compensation from you and the other man. I'll take custody. So I'll need child support too, if you don't agree, I'm ready to take. This to court, are you serious, realizing I was serious, she signed the papers, trembling and in tears, we officially divorced soon after, and I got the compensation and child support settled properly, 
she got embarrassed by that incident becoming known at her workplace and resigned, at the end, she had nowhere to go and tried to stay with her boyfriend, but he kicked her out, angry about the compensation demands. Unable to find a full-time job, she's now living quietly in an old house, juggling. Day and night shifts, I heard those stories when I met her, she insisted on giving Ethan his birthday present, so I arranged for them to meet at the restaurant, it had only been a month, but she looked unkempt and thinner, almost unrecognizable Ethan, I'm sorry for being late, happy birthday, handing the present to Ethan, he silently accepted and opened it, inside was a black bag, how do you like it? You're in elementary school now, so I thought something a bit mature, when Madison asked in a small voice, he responded loudly, I don't think I'll use it, but I'll take it, what, Ethan, let's go home, dad, okay, yeah, let's go, stunned by his unexpected response, Madison remained frozen, two of us left the restaurant, a marriage starts with two strangers, when they marry and have children, living together, not everything goes as planned, that's why couples and families need to support each other to last. Six months later, our house was completed, my father was discharged from the hospital and seemed in good health. Amazing, it's beautiful, yeah, I'm glad we decided to build a new one, from now on, it will be just the three of us, men, there might be challenges, but we'll support each other and live together, alright, I've got to keep working hard, go, dad, Ethan cheered, wearing the stethoscope I gave him. I vow to continue my work with pride and compassion, being a doctor and father, Ethan can always rely on. Showing him the nobility of our profession, thank you for joining us on this journey, don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up so you won't miss any of our next videos, we'll be back with more uplifting and inspiring stories.